Hello and welcome to part four of the Johnny Blender 5, aka Jackie Blender's tutorial series. This is David Ward. And when last I left you, we had just uh, finished closing the guy's little guy's mouth and giving him a body and some, some legs. So, um, like I said in part three, I'd like to go ahead and give him a, a different pose to where it's more neutral rather than kind of crouched down like he is. So, let's go ahead and, and do that. We'll tab into edit mode. And let's grab these that row of that loop of vertices right there shift s and i'm going to put my cursor to the selected and then i'm going to select on down the front leg there okay go to our side view and I hit the period button so i'm rotating around that like so and i'm going to turn on my proportional editing so we'll rotate that a little straighter and do the same thing down here on this uh, the the elbow area, I guess. I guess just for clarification, his front arm, his front legs and paws. I'm gonna car, call arms and hands, and then the, the rear is going to be legs and feet. So just so it's easier <laughs> to understand and talk about. So, anyways, straighten his elbow out some, and go ahead and put the 3D cursor around his wrist. Shift S, cursor to selected, and select the whole hand area and flatten that back out like so okay so now the front legs are more straight however it still looks like he's kind of crouched down so tell you what let's select control plus we can select up his arm that way all the way to his shoulder and let's move that in a little bit because it still looks like he's kind of crouched down so let's move it about like so yeah there we go Okay, now let's kind of get the, the rear legs straightened out. So let's do the same thing. Put the 3D cursor around the top joint there. Shift S, cursor to selected. And then, tell you what, we can do like we did on the hand. Just select part of the foot by itself. And control plus a few times until it selects all the way up to there. And go ahead and straighten that out like so. Do the same thing around the knee. Oh, I guess I need to put the 3D cursor there first, huh? There we go. Shift S, cursor to selected. There we go. And then those two loops. Straighten that out just a bit. Okay, and then around the the heel area, Shift S, cursor to selected. And select that loop and that. And then here, and go ahead and straighten those out. And if you look at the front, again, he's kind of lined up with that uh, grid line there. So we're almost there. So just rotate. Oops. One thing about undoing, you can't undo the location of the 3D cursor if you accidentally mess up, so you gotta you gotta do it again. So let's rotate a little bit further. Okay, and now around the ankle, or I guess the toe area. Cursor to selected. And like so. And then the same thing, let's move the whole leg. Control plus up. Actually, let's not select that piece or that one. Oops. There we go. And let's move that on the x-axis in. Like so. Okay, I think that'll work. Now let's give the little guy a tail so he can wag it if he's happy. So let's select that face right there. Let's scale it down a little bit. Also go control comma so we're back around the 3D cursor. And let's scale it on the x-axis, because remember this is half uh, of a width, so it actually needs to be more rectangular at this point. Okay, so let's go ahead and remember control and click, and it'll automatically extrude accordingly. Okay, so let me, yeah, looking at a reference real quick of a Jack Russell Terrier, their tails are fairly straight. Kind of just taper down. So actually just select the tip and Alt S and increase our fall off quite a bit. Like so let's move the move that guy. Kind of turn off the Alt S for now, the proportional editing.
Okay. There we go. Also, some uh, Jack Russells have the little bob tail. So, I mean, you could chop it off right there if you wanted to, but we don't want to be mean to the little guy. So let's just make it maybe a little bit shorter. There we go. Okay. So we have the body pretty well done now. That was quick. A lot quicker than working with a <laughs> a, a person for some reason. I don't know maybe it's because we don't have to do like individual fingers and fingernails and all that stuff. But uh, I would like to make the toes a little bit... Where are we at here? Come, so they're not curved quite as much on the bottoms. Like so. Anyway, I think that'll work. Okay, now, um, let's see. I guess let's go ahead and do the eyeballs. Go ahead and select the eye. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit X. I'm going to delete that edge loop that we have there. And it, it'll just delete it. Just take that out and kind of merge it to back, back the way it was before. Tell you what, tab out and hit Alt R and clear out the rotation so we're all perfectly lined up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm sure you've seen me do it before. I'm going to select uh, select all these uh, vertices here. I'm going to Shift D, okay, and then I'm going to hide them. So we just duplicated this whole group here, but it's hidden now. So what I want to do now is select this, and I'm going to S Y negative one. So I'm going to scale that inwards like so, so it's concave, okay, and that's where his iris and everything is going to be, and before we go any further, let's go ahead and give him a pupil, so about like so, drag that on the y-axis, I can do this all with a with a texture map, but I like to do things physically as well, okay, so it looks like now you can't see that, but if you go into wireframe view, you can see it, now what we'll do uh, once we start texturing is we will go ahead and make this the part that we duplicated that's hidden right now that'll be transparent and then we'll put an actual texture map onto the rest of it and that'll you know that'll uh, give it the concave look of the of, uh, of an eye so anyways um yes so let's go ahead and add the um the seams so when we get get around to it we can easily unwrap it now um, actually there's a couple of different UV you know what I'll do that when I get to it there's an uh, there's a technique I want to show you I think I've, I might have shown you in previous tutorials but I'll go ahead and show you again but in any case uh, we'll get to that uh, when we get to it so for now let's go ahead and add seams around le poupée le perro is that right Spanish I'm not for sure uh, so let's add a seam right there around his nose. Control E, mark the seam. And then we already have one inside the mouth and the gums and the teeth. Those are all done. So we don't have to worry about those. And oh, you know, one thing we need to do. He needs some eyelids, doesn't he? Okay. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's select the eye, Shift D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to Shift select the uh, model there and Control J. So I'm going to duplicate the eyeball and join it to the mesh. So now when I tab into edit mode of the dog itself, we have the eyeball as well. If I hit Alt H, you can see we had that lens that we hid, Control L. Go ahead and delete that. Invalid boundary. I do not know what that means. Control L, delete. It's gonna let me delete, delete vertices. There we go. Hmm, I wonder what that was. That was weird, I've never seen that before. Uh, but in any case, we only want half of this uh, a sphere, so I'm going to select all the rest there, and that guy, hit delete, vertices, and then select just a vertex of whatever's left over there, and hit control L, and go ahead and delete that. And now I'll select the outermost loop there of the, lens, of the uh, remaining sphere, and I'm going to hit E to extrude all that, and then scale it down just a bit, so we have a thickness to it. I'm going to control L, and I'll tell you what, actually, Let's grab let's grab this whole loop here around the outer edge. Shift S, cursor to selected, and that's effectively going to put the cursor at the center 
of where that sphere would have been had it been all there. But uh, since we cut it in half, it's only half there, obviously. But now I want to go ahead and rotate. Oops, hit the period button. Go ahead and rotate around that. And you can see it follows along the eyeball you know, perfectly fine. But one thing we need to do is make it a little bit bigger so it actually sits above the eyeball. Like so. Maybe a little bigger even. And then scale this one down. Maybe add another loop right there along the edge so it's got a nice sharp corner to it. Okay. You can see now he's got a top eyelid. He needs a bottom eyelid as well. So control L. Again, this is a cartoon dog. If you're doing a, a realistic dog, you'll definitely want to put the eyelid as part of the actual face mesh right there. But uh, being a cartoon, this it'll be a lot easier just to just to do it like this. Okay, control oops. Ah, where am I going? Three, side view. Shift D, duplicate that, and we're still rotating around the 3D cursor, which is still right there in the middle. So we'll go ahead and rotate that around this way. Okay. And now it looks a little weird because you can see the corners of it and it's going to overlap right there. So what we want to do is select both both lids now, the top and bottom. Let's go to our top view. We want to rotate that, actually just go to our front view. Rotate that around the Z axis to where you can't see the corners of either this side or, or this side. So we don't want to rotate it too far because then you'll see there and those actually glued together now. So I'll tell you what turn off clipping for now. You can see we don't want to turn it that far obviously because that just it looks weird that way. So let's turn it let's see that would be if we look down in here as we rotate you can see the amount the degrees that you're rotating. Right now see it says 42.93 and now it says 49.43 so you can kinda get an idea of how far you're rotating it there. So if I leave it there that's zero but if I rotate it all the way to where I shouldn't that's 53. So let's go about 25. That might be around. Then we can just type it in RZ25 on the numpad. And that'll rotate it 25 degrees on the Z axis. And that looks pretty good. So now when we go in later to add the, the rig for the eyelids, remember that they're 25 degrees rotated from the front. So they can they can rotate as they should. Like instead of up and down it'll be actually according to the way they are on there so anyways okay so now he's got his eyelids good to go now let's finish adding the seams let's add another seam right here around his face like so, so control E go ahead and mark that and let's go ahead and separate his ears out so we'll go ahead and add another seam around there control E mark that Actually, I think I said mark sharp, didn't I? Control E. You'd think the pop-up would stay on the last selection that you did, like other software does. But uh, anyways, make sure you say mark seam instead of mark sharp. Okay. So let's go ahead and select the edges of the ear. Go ahead and deselect anything else that might have been selected. Control E. Mark seam. Did it? Tried to do it again. Um, okay. So now... Let's go around the neck. And then we'll also have to come up the chin so it separates out the back of the head. Mark seam. Mark seam. Didn't look like it did anything. Uh, okay. Sometimes uh, if you don't have the subsurf visible in the edit mode, it's kind of hard to see some of those edges. So right now it's marked, but you can't tell. So if we hit this little triangle over here, apply modifier to editing cage during edit mode. That's what we're in. We're in edit mode and we want to see the subsurf. So go ahead and click that and it'll show you the smooth version of uh of, you know of the uh, of the mesh. So okay, let's do the same thing around the arms. Go down right there and then right there. Control E, mark the seam there. And let's go inside about right there. Okay, that'll that'll work. Mark seam. And then the same thing over here, maybe, yeah, right there. Or let's see, maybe, I'm trying to find which one would be the best, the best bet. There we go. Let's deselect that. Control E, mark that seam. And then around the pause, let's go ahead and 
add a loop right there mark that seam and let's get rid of the seam that came over here when we went down the side of the leg go ahead and clear that and that one okay and we're gonna add a new seam just around the pause the middle of the pause there like so now I need to deselect everything else okay All right, and we'll go ahead and control E, mark that seam. Good to go. And do the same thing on the front pause right there and then around the wrist. And then deselect everything you don't want to mark. Good to go. I think so. Let's go ahead and hit the period button so it zooms in on what's selected and you can rotate around it a lot easier. Okay, go ahead and mark that seam and then I want to unmark this guy right here again like we did on the back foot that comes down from when we marked the leg so go ahead and clear that and almost there let's add a seam down the middle of of the guy let's grab our edge select mode this time and tell you what click on this this if you hover over the little square right there it'll get a pop that says limit sec selection to visible so if we turn that on it limits you can't see through it anymore so if it's turned off it looks like an x-ray vision you can see through the other side but if you turn that on you don't have to worry about selecting the wrong thing let's see if it's turned off I can actually select there on the back but I don't want that I just want the front so let's turn that back on for now select this hole underneath his belly all the way up to his tail and then we'll select around the tail and then go ahead and come down to the tip of the tail as well. Control E. Go ahead and mark that. And I do believe that that is all of the seams that we need to mark. Okay, so now let's split our window up over here. Oopsie. Grab the side of Blender instead of the diagonal lines there. There we go. And go to UV Image Editor. And we're gonna, we're still in edit mode over in this window, so we'll go ahead and hit A to select everything and go U, unwrap and it's gonna unwrap everything however um, we still have the mirror applied so everything that we unwrap now is half of what it should be so what we can do is go ahead and tab out go ahead and save this one and as I said in Johnny Blender 4 I do believe I like to create a secondary file uh, if I'm going to be applying any modifiers or anything and since I'm about to apply the mirror modifier I'm gonna go ahead and save this as Part 4A. Caps lock was still on. Cap part 4A. There we go. Excuse me. There we go. So now we're JB504A. So now I can go ahead and apply the mirror. And as usual, we tab in edit mode. The, uh, the seams that we marked on the left side were mirrored over to the right side automatically. So we don't have to mark those uh, again. So now if we select everything, you unwrap. Boom. Gets everything unwrapped. And it looks a little messy, so let's uh, see if we can't fix it up. Fix it up a little bit. If we go average island scale, it'll adjust them to where they're more relative in size. And if we go UVs pack islands, it'll kind of rearrange them to where they fit in the defined area a little bit better. Okay, so um, I know part uh, three went on almost 30 minutes, but uh, I think that's going to be it for part four because next we'll get into texture painting and I think that'll take longer than 10 minutes probably so we'll just save that for its own section so uh, that's gonna be it for part four thank you for watching and I'll see you in part five